Take me out to California Take me out to California Hey, it's Jackie and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to celebrate the new release of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and recreate Margot Robbie's look as Sharon Tate. I went and saw it in actually film. I've never seen a movie in theaters and film, so that was kind of cool. Um, but as I was watching the full two hours and 40 minutes, um, I was waiting for a bolder Sharon look to recreate just because like, I love the 60s. Every 60s look that I've done has been quite bold, uh, but they definitely kept Sharon's look more natural in the movie and I decided to recreate this look and I did take it just a little bit more out there with the cut crease because I I just wanted to throw in more 60s in there, so hopefully you like my take on the look, and if you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more beauty videos. You might see I have some merch now. I've been working that on that forever, and I finally uh, made it go live, so we have this really cute phone case, which I have been using, and I love it, and then if you want to see all the other um, products on me, I will be posting pictures to my Instagram. So I hope you guys are excited. Um, I really love the quality, especially of this phone case and the mug. So uh, yeah, more info about that in probably my next video, but I did want to let you guys know about it and let's get started. <laughs> I've got my wig on, which was a hassle. I had to cut it and I have no experience cutting hair, so I'm sorry if it looks very wig-like. I tried my best to make it Sharon-esque. And my favorite skin product for uneven skin post-breakout is the Tatcha Silk Canvas. It is pricey, but I, I really love it. And I'm applying it over a patch here and then on my cheeks where my pores are a bit bigger. And I love the Benefit Hello Happy Foundation. I've used that one for so long and we have a new bottle here, so new packaging. And I chose to use shade three. I am changing my skin tone to be more warm like Margot's. And this look is very sunny, so I mixed in this bronze illuminator from Bobbi Brown. It's super glowy. I wish I used a little bit less because it is a bit sticky of consistency. I do love it. I use it all the time. I just mixed a little too much in. Usually I put it on before my foundation. But anyways, I did really like the end result. And I'm using some Benefit Hula Caramel like I have in so many videos and I'm beginning to add some definition to the cheekbones, under the jawline. Margot Robbie's jaw is much more structured and square than mine, so I'm trying to bring out um, you know, the corners of my own jaw, being a little heavy handed under the jawline and then under the cheekbones to make that section in between pop more. And also adding this bronzer up the cheeks where the sun would hit like the picture here and also on the forehead. Really just dusted a little bit of this all over and then moving on to the nose contour. I've done this nose contour before and while my recreation photos in the past might have been a bit more like Margot from afar, I always wish that I went more subtle with it in those tutorials. So this time I'm going really light handed adding the diamond like shape up top and then a rounded thinner tip with a bit of shading here and there on the nostrils using the Kevin Aquan sculpting powder on a small brush. Then I'm just using my finger to really dab this into the foundation so it looks more natural. And you might have noticed that I didn't highlight with concealer just to keep the look, again, more natural on the skin. Plus adding in quite a bit of bronzer will have the untouched areas look highlighted as it is. Adding some cream blush. This is one by Too Faced and I still love the peachy scents from their whole like peachy line. So good. I just love it. For brows, as always, I'm using the Benefit Precisely My Brow, but this time in shade 2.5 to better match the blonde hair. And my brows are so big, so they're not going to be the same as Margot's as Sharon. I did try to tone them down and follow a similar shape with a higher head than mine, and then slight arch and shorter tail. And then for shadows, first up we want a matte light shadow on the brow bone. This will pop more if you don't have any stray hairs like I do. And then the palette I'm using is Too Faced Natural Lust. I know the makeup artist used Vizart Eyeshadow Slim Pro Palette in Neutral Mattes. There's an article about it, so I'll have that link down below. But you can use any palette with neutral mattes. I took a light taupe and planned out the exaggerated crease out into a V. And then with a slightly a more deep brownie taupe, I created a rounded crease, again still exaggerated and in a bit more of a precise line, and I also tapered this down a little bit. To clean it up, I'm using Benefit's Brightening Eye Pencil. This is super easy to make the look clean in 60s without a ton of products. 
I also added this pencil in the inner corner and then on the waterline. Margot's eyes are quite a bit smaller than mine, but since Sharon Tate has these big, deep set round eyes, I thought I'd go with more of my natural shape anyway. And to tone down the cut crease, instead of a bold light shadow shade like in some of my previous 60s looks, I added a muted pink slash champagne shadow. Now under the bottom lashes, start with a warm brown near the tear duct and fade out about halfway. And then fade to the crease shade and add a bit of gray on the very outer corner. You can always cut down on the amount of shadow shades you use, I'm just utilizing this awesome Too Faced palette. And with the gray, I chose to slightly shade the outer and inner lid for extra roundness like Sharon. And here's some of my other inspo photos that I was looking at. Finishing up the other eye, and with a very precise brush, you can add in more of a matte gray to the outer and inner bit of the line and soften up the rest of the shadows for a blend of soft and 60s. I didn't see a lot of liner on the lash line throughout the movie at all, but I did add some black before a pair of neutral outer corner lashes to help blend them in. And then I added some super cool mascara. This is also from Too Faced, and it's such a massive mascara and wand, which is just fun to use. Kept them kind of chunky and added just a tiny bit of mascara to the bottom lashes. Lipstick time. In the first Margot Robbie look I did, which was the uh, Wolf of Wall Street video, I used one of these other Benefit Double the Lip lipsticks, so I think I was just drawn to them again. And the shade I chose is Criminally Coral. It's a mix of nude and peach. There's a nude part on the top like a lip liner and then it goes to more of a peach, which is exactly what I was going for. I do have similar lips to Margot with a fuller bottom lip, so I didn't go in line before and change the shape really, but I do love adding a bit of taupe shadow on a brush to the outer corners for more dimension to the lips. Plus this looks really natural and it's just easier than using lip liner sometimes. And looking at this photo where the lip looks more nude, you can add in a shadow highlight or another nude lipstick in the middle. Lots of options, but I did like having more of a coral base like this picture of Sharon. Finally, there was a gorgeous natural looking highlight that really picked up the light. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand on the cheeks more than the cheekbones, chin and nose on the tip, and then following the diamond shape on either side rather than down the middle. This adds a nice structure to the nose like Margot's. But I'll be coming, coming home soon. Yeah, I'll be coming, coming home soon. So take me out to Okay, and this was totally for fun, but in the movie, we saw glimpses of Sharon Tate being very colorful, wearing lots of head scarves. I do have a full collection of scarves, but none of them were long enough like hers, but I still wanted to see what it would look like tied around my head, like when Sharon was in the convertible, keeping her blowout in place. Also, big glasses, super fun. All of this I got from H&M, and then the white skirt is Forever 21, and all I needed was a pair of go-go boots if I was going to use this for a costume, so I'll have some of those linked down below if you're shopping. I hope you enjoyed this Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate tutorial, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more beauty videos. Also, if you do... That never happens when I film. Anywho, if you do decide to purchase any of my merch, uh, be sure to tag me and tell me about it. I'd love to know your thoughts. I made it really girly and fun for this first round of merch, and uh, I do have some more design ideas, so definitely let me know feedback and um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, I'll definitely feature you. So if you're wearing any of my merch and you take a photo, I would love to showcase your look in my videos just like I normally do with your recreations. So here are a couple of your recreations that I have been loving. So thank you for sending those in and also I have a vlog channel if you wanna keep up with me on there too, but I'm telling you to check out way too many things so I'm just gonna go, but um, I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm out filming and I get like <laughs> major anxiety. Even though like no one knows who I am or like what the hell I'm doing, but like I hate being in public. Ah.